For practical assignment eight, we are going to experiment with creating a small application and just getting a sense of, of some of the things we have to look for when we're supporting applications. And some of this I talked about in the lecture portion of the course. So let's get started. So first we have to make sure that our virtual machine is running. So you're gonna log into your Google console and make sure your virtual machine is turned on. If you haven't used it since PA4, you'll notice that your uh, external IP may have changed. And if that's the case, we'll have to make a few changes in other applications that we've been working with. So in MySQL Workbench, you'll have to change the IP address. So you're going to right click on uh, whatever you know you saved your connection as. You're going to edit the connection and just change the IP address right here. Make sure that's set to the correct IP address. Just copy and paste it from Google. So once you do that, you should be able to double click this and it should connect you to your SQL server your Microsoft or your uh, MySQL server, my MariaDB server. So I'm in, I'm connected. The other thing we want to do is uh, take a look at Notepad++. If you are using um, Notepad++ to edit your files, which I recommend because it's a lot easier. Uh, if you go to your profile settings, in my case, I've got Info365. Uh, make sure that your connection, <clears throat> the host name for the connection is correct. So double check that. Once you do all that, you should be able to, to click here and connect to your remote system. So there we are. So I am connected. For this assignment, I am going to create a new folder for myself. So I'm going to create a new directory and call it PA8. That way I could just keep my files organized. And inside PA8, so we're going to make a, um, we're just going to make a little test app, right? So I'm going to call it uh, I'm just going to call it test.php. You can use a different name if you like, but I'm calling mine test.php. And we're going to use this as kind of a scratch pad to, oh, and I'm sorry, I uh, let me delete this. I didn't mean to create a directory. I meant to create a file. So create a new file, not, not directory. So test.php. Okay, so now I've created my, my little test.php. We always have to put our little uh, wickets in here for our PHP code to work. So now that I've got that working, now I'm working with my file that's live on the server just to test it. Um, I think it's a PHP info that we can use. So if I open up the PowerShell, So I'm going to SSH to my server. All right, I'm connected. And I'm just going to blow this up so it's easier to see. Um, so let me change directory to my PA8 directory. And if I show my uh, list of files, there's my test.php. I'm going to try to run it with PHP. And it works, right? So it gave me a whole bunch of stuff. This is everything that's in the uh, that PHP info gives you. If you were in a web browser, it would look a lot, um, you know, it would look a lot more formatted in a web browser. Now, here's the thing: is that you know, really, to do this assignment, it would be better to do it as like maybe make a little web application. But I didn't want everyone to have to set up their firewalls in Google and go through all of that. So. Um, we're just going to make a simple console-based application to keep it really simple and just concentrate on the database functionality and not so much on creating an application. So I want to try to keep it as simple as I can so that we can kind of get a sense of, you know, how applications work with databases and we can just kind of get a basic understanding of that. So let's go back. I'm going to clear the screen so it's not, doesn't have all that stuff on it. So let's go back to our PHP script. So um, first, if I want to create, uh, create a connection, if you recall from the PowerPoint presentation from the slide deck, um, I talked about using an API uh, to connect to a database. In fact, I figured I'd show you. So the first step is to identify and register a database driver, uh, and then you open a connection to the database. So in PHP, we, we, we have to follow the exact same steps, right? As far as identify and register a database driver, we've already done that. In PHP, remember in Practical Assignment 4, we had to install PHP, but then uh, when we installed PHP and uh, the drivers for MySQL and PHP, um, that identified and 
register our database. So, so the next step is we have to put in the information in order to connect to our database. Uh, and then we have to open that connection. So let's do these first two steps. So to identify our database, so the parameters for our database, and this is just like PA 4.1, uh, there's my connection info to my college scorecard database that we've been using for this uh, course. And then to create a connection, I'm going to do one thing that's a little bit different than PA4. So you can't just copy and paste the code from PA4. Um, you can see here that I've added dollar globals to, instead of just calling it dollar sign C-O-N-N, I made this a global variable instead. Um, and that's kind of important. You don't necessarily have to do this, but um, but if I want to, if we, if we want to use this from functions uh, and um, always make sure that that variable is available, we have to make it a global. So it's best practice to do that. And I'm just doing that here because I think it makes sense. Um, so that's how we create our connection. And then we're going to try to make our connection to the database. So this is actually going to try to connect to the database. And again, this code is very similar to what we did previously. And assuming this works, if I uh, run php test.php, oh, maybe I forgot to save this. Let me go back. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, that's right. So that should, uh, this should run. Oh, you know what? We have to get rid of this PHP info. It's giving us all that extra info we don't care about, right? So I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. Connected successfully. It's up here in the front. Of course, we're doing this from the console. So one of the things I like to do um, in the console if you just add a backslash n, like so, it will add some carriage returns. Um, not carriage returns, new lines. It'll add some new lines. There we go. And actually put one on the end. That way it doesn't look funny, right? So connect it successfully. There we go. Put a couple of uh, line feeds on the front and the back. So there we go. Now it looks a little better. So we know it's connecting. So let's see what the next step is in order to uh, use a database. We want to execute a query against the database. So let's go back and create a query. So for example, um, I'm just going to call it dollar $query. Select star from school where, and if you remember, the uh, it was INSTNM for institution name. And I'm just going to look for anything that's uh, that's like Drexel, right? So I'm looking for any school that's like Drexel. All right, so that's my query. So how do I actually uh, run that query against my database? So we kind of did this before, but we're going to do uh, if uh, so. We're going to create a variable called result and. We're going to use our database connection. And we're going to run the query. And the argument for query is going to be dollar $query. And assuming that works, we should be able to, uh, let's see, so number of rows. Let's see if that works. And I'm kind of writing this off the cuff here, so. There we go. Number of rows is one. You can see right here in the front. I have to remember to add that carriage return. Otherwise, this is going to get confusing, right? In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add this right at the bottom. That way, every time we make a change, we don't have to worry about doing that. So there we go. So I got one row returned. So going back to our list of steps here. So now we know that we're able to, um, to execute the query. How do we process the results of that query? So let's take a look at how that works. So I'm going to go in here, and in addition to number of rows, we are going to uh, create a variable called row. So the row is going to be the result, 
We're going to fetch it into an associative, associate array. So I think this is the right uh, format to do this. And then if we, uh, we should be able to echo So I'm just going to echo, actually, let's do this first. I'm going to use a special command in PHP. Basically, the print R is going to show us a um, whatever the data structure is. So row is going to be a collection of records. In Python, um, so some of you looked at my Python example from PA4. We could also do this assignment in Python, or we could do it in PHP. In this class, I'm using PHP because I think uh, some of you learned PHP in in one set of classes for database development, some of you learn Python for the you know programming type classes, but you could use either language. And I may even make an example of this with Python as well, just so you can see how it works. But in any event, um, when I get the, basically what I'm doing here is I'm getting an array, right? And I'm stuffing it into that row variable. So that row is gonna contain, and it's only the first row, right? There may be multiple records in that row, but let's see if this works. Um, or it's going to give us an error. And then we have to go, there we go. So we have an error here. It says that uh, asso association or a sock is not a defined function. So I have to look up the syntax real quick. So let's go back to our script. So it says that this is not uh, valid, right? Because I have the wrong keyword here. And I think it's going to be a fetch array. Well, actually, fetch associate array should also work. Let me just look up. I'm on the PHP site on my other screen, and it looks like that is the right... Yeah, so it's just an underscore instead of a dash. So let's see if that works. A little bit of trial and error when we do it. There we go. So that returned one of our rows, right? We've got a whole bunch of stuff in here, right? And we could work with this if we wanted to. So let's see if we can format this a little bit better. Um, instead of just printing the whole row, let's just print the institution name. So I do that with the bracket, institution name. Let's see if it at least just prints the institution name for us. There it goes, Drexel University. So it worked, so it found that one record. Now in this example, there's only one record. Um, Although I think there could be more records, you know, maybe there are. So let's let's try to do this with a loop instead of just showing the one record. Let's do a loop while dollar row is equal to this associative array. So it's going to loop through each one of our rows. And again, I need to put my uh, my new lines in, or else it's hard to read this stuff. So assuming that I did this right, um, there's only one Drexel, right? So it's one row, it's Drexel University. But let's see if we can find something that has more than one row. Um, I know that uh, on my side of the river in New Jersey, we keep uh, seeing that Rowan University keeps buying up a bunch of uh, colleges and renaming them. So let's try Rowan. There should be a couple different Rowans out there. There we go. So now I've got... My four Rowans, Rowan at Burlington County, Gloucester, I don't know what the third one is, and then the real Rowan University. Um, so that works, right? So that gives us our four rows. And I can show other fields if I want to. I think another field that's available to us is city. So I can concatenate the city in here. There we go. So Rowan College of Burlington County is in Mount Laurel. Rowan University is in Glassboro, Sewell, Salisbury, Maryland, probably. Um, so now we can show additional information. Um, now, when I when I first showed, and by the way, let, let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna add to the bottom here. Um, let's add. Um, goodness. Um, So let's let's do the print underscore r and just show that array the contents of that array. And 
And this is just going to show the last row. Oops. Oh, see, I already used it here. So what I'll do is just embed this in here. There we go. For each row, we're just going to show, show it as an array as well, which we already did, right? So there's an array. So this is a data structure, right? This is a data structure in PHP. But if we're writing some kind, if we have a web application uh, that's maybe like an API, um, a lot of times we have to return this information in a format that's interchangeable, like XML or JSON or something like that. So we could turn this into JSON with PHP. It has a nice simple library to do that. Python does as well. Um, and it's the serialized library. So instead of showing the, uh, you know, showing this row as a, um, you know, as individual text, instead I can go in here and uh, show JSON. So in fact, what I'm going to do is instead of deleting this, we'll just comment this and I think it's JSON, there we go, JSON and code. So we're gonna take that whole row and just turn it into a JSON string. There we go. So that's the row as JSON. Um, of course, this is many rows, right? It's just, you know, outputting it over and over again. Um, so let's see what else we could do here. So, and, and we're gonna kind of do a break point here in just a minute. What I wanna do is maybe instead of you know, as if you're an application developer, so by the way, going back to our steps, right? So now we've processed the results of the query and then we repeat steps three and four as necessary, right? We might have a couple different queries in an application that run and then eventually we close the connection to the database. So the next thing I wanna do is, is let's say I want to, um, instead of hard coding my application to have the uh, uh, you know the the query parameter. Instead, I want to make it an argument. So it just so happens that um, in uh, let me see if we can do this real quick. In PHP, you can capture arguments. Now, normally, normally you would look like this. So normally you would have get. So for those of you who have taken a uh, you know a, a web programming class with PHP or really any language, there's a, a get an HTTP get. So in PHP, it's dollar underscore get, and then it's whatever parameter you put in the URL. You can also use post. This is when you're posting to a web server. So typically with APIs and things like that, you're posting to a web server, you're getting stuff by putting it in the URL as parameters. For example, let me let me show you a quick example. So here's probably the simplest example. This is google.com, right? Um, and there's nothing in my, you know, if I go up here and refresh, right? If I want to though, instead of, um, I could put a question mark on here, add Q and make the parameter PHP string functions. And it automatically puts it in my search down here. And you could add additional parameters that tell Google to go and search for that stuff instead of giving you the form, right? Uh, in fact, if I click on Google search, a whole bunch of stuff appears up here, right? All these different parameters. And you can go and decode this if you wanted to, to figure out which parameters you need to have it just automatically do a search for you. But well, we can do sort of the same thing with, with PHP. PHP lets you pass parameters, right? You can see actually Google's using parameters here as well, right? So my uh, my project is um, archive media, whatever. My authenticated user is number one. My instance size is 50, right? So there's a bunch of parameters. Those parameters could also be in a, um, you know, you could also put them in a form and a web page. And when you click the button to submit the form, instead of being the parameters being in the URL, it can post it directly to the web page. So that's how web applications work. Since we're doing this in the console, um, dollar underscore get's not going to work, right? I, can't, I I have no parameters to work with because you know if I come back over here, if I try to put question mark something, right, it's going to fail because there's no file called question mark something, right? So you can't add parameters there. So instead, um, PHP, since it's also a con, you know, I think some of you in the discussion board told me that uh, PHP is not a uh, a uh, scripting language for the console, right? But it does have, you know, a lot of the same things that most other console scripting applications have, right? Um, so for example, um, dollar argv is an array of arguments, right? So the first argument, the zeroth argument is the name of the file. 
the first argument is whatever appears after the file name, and then the second argument, the third argument, and so forth and so on. So I can use those as parameters. So in this case, if I, um, let's come back over here. So I, I now I'm showing the uh, a value here, and let me echo what this looks like so we can see it. And I'll tell you what, we're going to turn off the output so that it doesn't clog up our screen. But now, so you can see it found um, it found the parameter that I put after PHP, and it runs that query and shows me that I have four rows, right, for Rowan. And I could do the same thing for Drexel, right? So it found one row for Drexel. So that works. So let's go back over here. Um, I'm going to comment this out. All right, so now we know that's going to work, right? We know that it's going to find the records that we're looking for. So now if I pass in an argument, I'm going to get back the um, my list of records. So let's go back over here. So if I do Drexel, I get the JSON encoded string for Drexel. I can do Rowan. And I get a JSON encoded string for Rowan. Um, you know, just a, uh, all the values. Now, there's more than just, uh, you know, JSON encode. There's other mechanisms, right? There's other things you could do. Another another example is Serialize. Serialize creates a, um, uh, basically creates a PHP string. It's it's kind of like JSON, but it's it's only it only works from PHP to PHP. It wouldn't work if you're going from PHP to Java, right? But if you have one application written in Java, a different application written in PHP, a different one in Python, you can pass JSON strings between all these different applications. And as long as they each have a JSON parser, they'll be able to work with that JSON data. Likewise with XML. XML is very similar, right? It's a little, you know, there's, there's some more, there's additional capability in XML, right? Um, but it's the exact same idea. JSON really has kind of emerged as sort of the, the de facto standard for database, you know, passing database information back and forth between disparate systems. But in any event, if I use uh, Serialize, I could do the same thing. So we'll go back and do Drexel. And you can see it looks a little bit different, right? It's not not exactly JSON, but, um, uh, but it works, right? Um, and again, this only works for passing data between um, different PHP applications. Um, but most of the time, we want to try to work with data in a database if it's, you know, we, we never want to work with these serialized strings uh, in the database, right? Theoretically, you could just pass these into a database and store them as a big blob and then work with them that way. But that's not a very clean way to work with your data. Uh, we definitely want to continue to work with databases. But in any event, um, let's go back to our script. So now we've got this working where it's uh, I'm passing in an argument, which is, you know, some value and I'm getting back a string. But let's be a little more precise here, right? Instead of passing in the um, an argument for the, uh, right? So here I'm passing in an argument for the rough spelling of a, uh, um, of a college. Instead, maybe I can just pass back my institution name and my city, uh, but also maybe I want to look at the OPE ID. If you remember, let's go back to our database. Um, if you look at your database diagram that you did for Practical Assignment 4, you'll recall that the main identifier, uh, so if we look in school, so school is kind of the the main table we are working with. And if we recall in the school table, OPE ID, I don't know what that is, but that that's the primary key that we're using, right? That's how we're identifying all these colleges by the OPE ID. So usually I'm looking for the OPE ID if I want to work with these records. So I'm going to add that to my list here. So we're going to output the OPE ID. And let's use Rowan because there'll be more results, right? So Rowan's got four different OPE IDs associated with Rowan. Um, the only problem is this isn't formatted very well, right? The, the, this, uh, you know, they all kind of flow together here. So if I wanted to do some slightly better formatting, um, now normally you would use a table, right? So typically we'd want to use a table with um, 
uh, with uh, PHP when we're outputting to a web browser. But since this is text only, I'm going to keep it really simple. So I'm going to start with, uh, you know, I'm just going to output something human readable. Schools found. And let's put a um, carriage return here as well. So schools found. And then what we're going to do is sort of output a very, a sort of a poor man's table here, right? So I'm going to output um, a line that has the rows that I'm interested in. Normally this would be like if you were, you know, creating a table in HTML, we would use the table, you know, markup for, for tables and rows and columns and things like that. But we're just trying to keep this really, really simple. I just want to output a row of, of colleges or whatnot. Um, oh, and you know what? I forgot. This has to go outside the while loop because if we run this inside the while loop, there we go. If we run it inside the while loop, it'll just output it over and over again, right? So inside the while loop, so now we know we're going to get a column for OPID, a column for name, a column for city, a column for state. Um, pretty much everything else is going to remain the same except let me get rid of what I have here already. Um, each time we go into this loop, we're going to want to output a carriage return or a new line rather. And then we're going to output one row at a time. So just as an example, we're going to output dollar row OPEID. Right, that's going to output the OPEIDs. So let's take a look. There we go. So there's my OPE IDs. But then when I want to output the name, I got to make sure that there's some padding between these two so that it's it's fixed width, right? So I want to turn this into a fixed width. So to do that, I have to use substring. So first I'm using substring to make sure that this is never over a certain length because that's going to ruin my formatting. So I'm just going to make it a maximum length of, of nine or the 10 characters altogether, right? So it can't be any longer than 10. And then I'm going to pad this so that, um, so first I truncate it down to a size that's manageable. And then if it's shorter than the 10, I just pad it out uh, to something, um, you know, to make sure I pad it out to 10. So the uh, string function to do that is str pad. Um, and then uh, we're going to pad it to 10. The pad characters is going to be a blank space. And... Oops, it's a string pad right. So string pad, str pad right is going to uh, basically add the blank space to the end. I'm just going to make sure I put a comma in there. All right, so if I do that, I really won't see any change here, right? Because there's nothing else to add. But if I want to add the rest of my fields, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to determine some... Uh, reasonable length for these fields. Oh, sorry about the extra space here. But these are my field four fields, and again, I'm just getting these right from uh, from that table, right? So um, from the table in MySQL. So I'm just using these field names up here. Assuming I did that right, it's a little bit more formatted now, right? So what I'd like you to do for the first deliverable for PA4 is first you want to uh, um, show me a uh, screenshot of outputting this um, this information and make sure when you do the screenshot, just put below here, type your name in when you take the screenshot so I can see your name in the screenshot. And that'll be uh, the first first portion of the deliverables for PA, for, I'm sorry, for PA8 um, is going to be just this list. So what you're showing here is that we launch our PHP script with the... Um, you know, with a uh, with a parameter, and then we get back a list. So pause the video and try this first. Make sure this works for you, and then we'll come back and go to the next step. So presumably you're coming back. You're ready to continue on to the next step. Uh, the next step is we're going to change this parameter. Actually, I'm sorry. We're not going to change the parameter. We're going to leave the parameter the same. And this is probably not the best way to do this, but you know, I want to try to demonstrate as much as I can here for you. Um, but the next thing I want to do is give the user the ability to select from that list, right? To type in an OPID um, to go and get some more information, right? Um, so to do that, I have to somehow get um, 
uh, some user input, right? So I have to get some user input from, you know, the user has to type in which OPE ID they're looking for. So to do that, um, we're going to do this. We're going to use a little library that's uh, in PHP. So I'm just going to put a couple new lines in. Please provide the OPE ID for the desired school. All right, now we have to ask, ask the user to do something. So there's a really simple little um, little library to do that with uh, PHP. So first it's F open, but you pass in uh, PHP standard in. That tells PHP to collect some input from the user. I forget what the R does, but I know that we always have to put that. So that's going to ask the user to type something in. I'm just going to keep with the same naming convention, standard in equals. Um, I'm going to get whatever they typed. And that's going to be from our handle. And I got to make sure we trim it. Um, so what we want to do is there might be, you know, when, when you collect stuff from the user, from the user interface, you know, from the command line, there might be some extra space on the front and the back. So we're going to trim that out. Um, that's going to get rid of any extra spaces, carriage returns, line feeds. So when the user hits the enter key, that might get passed in. I don't know if it does or it doesn't, but it's always just best practice to do that. So now if I echo, um, you entered. So that'll just output whatever it is that they that they entered. So if we go back and make sure that works. Whoops, uh, line 33, I have an error. Oh, I forgot to put the dollar sign in front of handle. There we go. Can't forget that. All right, so now it should ask us. So now my user would say they're looking for Rowan College of Burlington County. They'll type in 73000 and it tells me they entered the right variable. So now I should be able to do another SQL query, right? So I should add a... Um... So we're going to do pretty much the same thing, right? But up here, we're going to add select star from school, where OPE ID... equals, and instead of argument one, this is just going to be standard in. And I don't need the quotes around it because it's, um, we don't need the quotes because it's an integer in SQL, right? So that's going to be my query. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, get the results of that query. I'm just going to call it result two equals, I'm just going to copy and paste from up here, right? So it's, again, that connection that we already created. And I'm going to call this uh, we'll call it get college data. All right, so there's get college data. Uh, this will be college data result. This will make it a little bit easier for us to follow. Um, I'm just going to check to make sure that we get a record. So if the number of rows is greater than zero, we could just put equal to one as well, right? It could just be equals one. But I think some of these... Uh, might be in here multiple times. Um, all right, so if it's greater than zero, then we are going to do a while loop and just loop through each one of these rows. So while
So while college, oops, I'm going to make it a capital D so it's easier to follow. So we'll take our result. Fetch an associated array. And now we can output our college data. Let's give this a try. So now it should do a while loop through college data. Let's see if that works. Oh, whoops, we have a error at line 41. Um, unexpected arrow at 41. Oh, and I forgot to put the dollar sign. I keep forgetting those dollar signs because I keep going back and forth to Python. <laughs> All right, line 42, I probably forgot one there too. Yep. All right, so now I'm gonna put the OPE ID for Rowan University, 260-900. And I get, a, um, I get an error message that it doesn't like uh, fetch associative array. So let's go back. Oh, it's because this is a method, not, so I had to put the two, uh, this is a uh, method, not a uh, per, uh, property. So we have to put the parentheses after it, uh, but that should fix it. So we should be good now. 260900. There we go. So that output our array of information about own university, right? Um, now, here's the problem, though. So there's a lot of stuff in here. It may not be exactly what I'm looking for, right? So my application may not care about this, or maybe I have to format some stuff here, right? This, you know, maybe just isn't the right format uh, to return for my, my little API that I'm creating here. So one thing we could do, we talked about this last week uh, in the previous unit, is views, right? So for example, if I select um, institution name from, uh, what is this, school, right? But instead of just institution name, let's do a couple other fields. So we'll do uh, city, state abbreviation, um, the accrediting agency. Oh, and I forgot to put my uh, commas after each one of these. And I guess we'll pick another field. Um, yeah, institution URL. Right, so I'm just picking a few key fields that I wanna work with. Um, and this should work, right? So if I run this query, I just get a very limited number of fields. So next, if I, you know, if I want to, I could turn this into a view. So we talked about views. I'm going to call this school data. This is my school data view. So now that I created a view, I can now use this view instead of a table name. So now in my application, instead of my application querying directly against the school table, now it's going to query school data, right? So even though I'm doing select star, um, I'm not going to get back all the comms. I'm only going to get back what I've defined in the database for school data. So when I make that change, let's go over here. Oh, whoops. Um, make sure we did this right. So we have trying to get property of non-object in line 41. So I think it's saying that uh, the query failed at line 41. So let's just take a look. Yeah. So let's make sure that this is correct. Oh, you know what? Uh, we forgot the OPE ID. So you can't do a uh, 
you can't have a where clause looking for a column that doesn't exist, right? So we have to make sure the OPE ID is in here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. By the way, so once you create your view, now we have to alter the view. We're going to make some additional changes to this view. So now we're going to alter the view. Come back over here. Put in... Oops, zero, 0900. Zero, zero. There we go. So now we have a, just a very short list of exactly what we're looking for, right? Instead of getting back, you know, all of that extra data that we really don't care about. So now if I come back over here, um, so one thing I'm going to change here is instead of using print R, I'm going to use an echo and I'm going to echo this as uh, JSON. Right. Instead of instead of echoing a uh, PHP array, now it's a JSON object, which would be something that some other application would be able to consume. There we go. So now I have a um, a JSON object to work with, and I can make just a little bit of a change here. Is uh, I'm going to add a couple of new line fields. There we go. So there's my my JSON object. Um, just to try a different example, let's do brown. I know there's a bunch of browns. Um, so we'll do uh, 4051329. There we go. So it works, right? We have what we want. We just have a finite number of fields. Now, the important thing is I didn't have to do anything in my application code. I was able to do it in the database instead. And there's all, all kinds of things we can do in the database as opposed to relying on our applications to do that. So we want to try to pass data to our applications as, you know, as close to the formatting they need as possible. But what's cool about this is let's say I want to add some additional fields to this API that I'm creating, right? Let's say I wanted to add more than just the URL. Maybe I also want to... Um, add some additional fields. Let's see what other fields we have in here that we can work with. So how about the, uh, how about the locale, right? So locale was one of the fields that we could work with. So I'm going to alter that view, add the locale, come back over here. You can see that the locale is not listed at the end. It, this ends with St. Louis, right? That's the last thing. But if I add Now you've got locale is 21, right, at the end. I can also change the order that the fields appear in, right? Uh, this is one of the concepts with this, you know, with databases that we talked about is that the database engine doesn't care about the physical structure of the database. It works regardless of the physical structure of the rows and the columns. But I can reorder them in this view, and it'll pass those columns in the correct order to my application. So I don't have to make code changes in the application you know, from the database engine, I can make those changes. It'll be reflected in my code um, from my small application that I've created. So two things that I want to do at this point. Uh, number one is um, from there's we have two options here, right? So at this point, if I were a programmer building an application, um, let's say I wanted to get that locale. One, one way I could do that is to add a join in here, right? So I could say join... Oops, it's locale. Uh, so we're going to join locale on locale dot um, locale ID equals school data. And then I have to add to this, uh, well, I don't have to really add anything to this star. This is going to go and get my locale information. Um, I'll just save that and run this again. Assuming I did this right, let's just make one up here again. 4051332. Okay, so now 
it, it not only has the uh, the locale ID, but I also have um, now the value for locale, right? So I have that as well. Um, so now I can see that it's, uh, you know, this is a college that's in a city that's got a large population of 250,000 or more, which is great. Um, but in order to do that, I had to add it into, you know, I had to put a join inside my application code. Um, again, you know, I might not want to have to do all that. What if, what if the structure of my database changes, right? That means that I'm going to have to go in and change all of my joins and my select statements, you know, and so forth. And also, you know, in this example, I'm just getting JSON, right? But what if I'm getting specific column names like I am up here? Like here, I'm referencing the actual column names. Well, what if I make a minor change in my database and it requires me to change one of the column names, right? Now it's gonna, that change is going to cascade to all the folks that have applications that are written to use my database. So I want to try to abstract that kind of stuff. Now we talked about procedures and functions. Um, they can do some of this and views can as well. Since we learned about views, I'm going to demonstrate this with a view, but this could also be done with stored procedures. Um, in other words, from an application, instead of selecting from a view, instead you can call a stored procedure, which then goes does the queries and returns a data set, right? So the, all of the application logic is in the database as opposed to, you know, in the, the um, programming in, you know, the application that we're writing. So let's do that, right? So instead of doing the join here, I'm going to go do the join in my view. So let's come back to the view. So here I am going to add my join. All right, and now instead of locale, I'm going to do locale value, right? I keep it in save. So I move the join into my view. Now I have the locale listed here. I'm going to come back over here. Once again, I'm going to put my, uh, you know what? I'm going to do something a little simpler here, like Rowan. It's a shorter list. Whoops. Oh, I, I did something wrong. Let me, uh, looks like on line 41. Uh, I think it's uh, not liking my query. Let's go back over here. So we're going to have to test this. Frequently with PHP, what I'll do is just echo my select statement. All right, so now that I'm echoing that statement, oh, that worked. That's weird. Okay, <laughs> so so it works fine. Um, I probably just had to restart my uh, my little script, um, but in any event, so. If you look at down here now, I just have you know after the institution URL. I have my locale value and there is my locale. Now, once again, let's say this is some kind of an API that I'm creating and somebody says, hey, Brian, these these um, variable names are all wrong. I need these variable names to be something else, right? That's your variables in the database, but they don't correspond with, you know, how we want to pass this JSON object around. So once again, because I'm using a view, I've got lots of function or, you know, lots of um, a flexibility here. So for the institution name, I can return that uh, with a different value. So I could say uh, college name, right? Two words. That wouldn't be common, but you could do that. Um, maybe I don't want this to be all caps, so it's going to be kind of a mixed case like this. Nobody knows what STRABBR is, so that's going to be state. And then uh, this is going to be Yeah, I could be spelling some of this stuff wrong, but oh, by the way, the uh, when I type those quotation marks, those are not quote. That's not a single quote on my keyboard. That is the one that's above the tab key on your keyboard. So if you look at your tab key where the tilde is, um, that little weird-looking single quote, that's the one that I'm using here. So make sure you use the right one. By the way, if you, in other database engines, it's the bracket. So you would do something like this. Um, 
But in uh, MariaDB, we don't use the brackets. We're going to use those, uh, I think it's called a grave, um, grammatically anyway. And we're going to do one, so um, location type. There we go. So now I, I, I ran this so it updates the view. Come back over here. Put in our school number again. Okay, and if you look, our variable names are now a little bit different, right? They uh, they're sort of aligned more with what maybe somebody might be looking for. And again, I'm making minimal changes. I'm not really changing anything in my code at this point. I'm just changing it here in the database. So I'm supporting that application by doing as much as I can within that database. So what I'd like you to do is um, is is add a, at least three more joins with three more fields uh, for your view. Um, and then I, what I'd like you to do is uh, when you when you when you submit this assignment, um, give me a copy of the view that you ended up using. Right, so you're going to customize the names of the fields just like I did here for your application. You're going to add a whole bunch of other columns, right? And you're going to add a whole bunch of other joins in here um, so that you get additional fields. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out for you what those, um, what those should, you know, which fields you should have, um, the ones that I'm looking for. So give me one second. Let me copy and paste into here. So these are the fields, the columns that I'd like you to work with. Um, so you're going to have to add joins to support this. And, and this is the basically the specification of what your variable names are going to be um, for PHP. So I want you to make the change uh, and add a bunch of joins. You're going to need to add, in addition to this one join that I have here, you're going to have to join three additional tables, um, which you should already know how to do. But one thing I'd like you to do is instead of just doing a join, make sure you use a left join. If you recall, if we just do a join and there's no no matching record for religious affiliation or locale or the cost or admissions and so forth, if there's no um, corresponding record for that OPE ID, there's going to be no record in our results. Instead, we want to have nulls in those fields instead of not instead of not having a result whenever there's you know something missing. So in other words, if somebody didn't report their admission statistics and we don't have any records for that. Uh, it's not going to show up, right? So we want to use a left join. Now with this data set, it may not be as big of an issue because if we were missing all that data, we inserted a record anyway that just had all null values. But in the real world, we would probably try to avoid that. Um, so make sure you put your left join in here. Um, and again, you're going to add those three other joins and you're going to add all of these columns and make that work. And then when you come over to your, um, uh, when you run your PHP script, you're going to run this again with the OPE ID but make sure when you take your screenshot, you add your name. So the next deliverable is going to be the view that you created along with a screenshot of, uh, of the screen here showing the results when you ran that PHP code. When you're done that, come back and we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so for our next step, we're going to extend this application that we're creating just a little bit. Um, and then we're going to try to play around with one last thing here. So what I'd like you to do, uh, going back over here, so after we create our connection up here, before we select from our institution name, so a couple things I'd like to do. Number one, um, we are going to, um, let me go ahead and just delete all this, and we're going to start from scratch here. So first, we want to have uh, some login, right? We want to add some login ability to our to our little application. So I'm going to ask the user to log in. So and this is very similar to what we did before. All I'm doing is I'm asking the user to put a passphrase in and then they're going to provide, you know, again, we're going to take standard in from PHP from the console uh, and we're going to uh, get their password. Right. There's probably there, there is a shorter way to do this if you wanted to. But, I, you know, in other words, you could just put around F gets you could put a trim around that uh, and do it all in one line. But just to keep it simple. Right. Uh, and make it easy for everyone to follow. I'm going to keep this separated. So that's going to uh, ask the user to put in their password. Let's just make sure that works. Right. So. My passphrase is. Password two, Right. And it works. Um, so our next step is we know that in our database, so I'm going to come over here to my database, 
and we know we've got this table for API users, right? We created this when we created our database. All right, so this is my list of API users, but um, yours may have for the user passphrase, they're all gonna be different, uh, or I'm sorry, they're all gonna be the same. So what we wanna do is make sure we update this so that they're all different. Um, that way, you know, we have a different password for each user for this little API that we're creating. Um, so we're gonna update API users. We are going to set the um, user passphrase. And I'm just gonna do this by concatenating two, um, two fields together. So we're gonna concatenate the word, actually I'm just gonna make it all lowercase. Well, just the letter P, we'll keep it really simple. So concatenate the letter P to whatever the ID is. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and let me just show you what, what this looks like. So concat is a function. Oops. Oh, I, did I spell API users wrong? Yes, I did. There we go. It's a lowercase s. There we go. So these, this is basically what my passwords would become. I'm concatenating the letter P to whatever their ID is, just so I have a unique value for each one of these. Um, but I'm just doing that in my update statement. So again, I'm using a function. We talked about row level functions uh, in the lecture a couple weeks ago in, in, unit, uh, in unit six. So let's do an update. And when I do that, if I select everything from API users, assuming that that worked, I should now see a whole bunch of different passwords and I do, this is good. So now that we've got our password set correctly, make sure you do this first. Um, that way this will make a little bit more sense. I mean, you could leave them all the same, but um, but it's definitely a little bit more meaningful to do it this way. So now that we're getting this password, let's go and check to make sure that they have an account, right? So to do that, uh, we are first going to, oops, we're going to ask our users to, uh, to put in their password. Then we're gonna create a SQL statement that goes and gets that login. And then we are going to process the query, right? So we learned how to do this already. So we, or I'm sorry, we execute the query and then we're gonna process that query. So I'm gonna process the query here. All I'm gonna do is uh, um, I'm gonna fetch into an array, the uh, whatever I got back, right? So whatever's in login results, it's gonna create an array called API user. I'm just gonna output what should be the username, the second position or the third position in that array. If you come back and look here, this is column one, column two, column three, right? Zero, one, two. So two is gonna have the username. So it's gonna say hello, whatever their username is. There is no P1, right? So we're gonna do P2, it looks like it didn't work. All right, so now we have to debug a little bit. So just like I did before. Get login. So you can see our query. Oh, there we go, it does work. I don't know why P2 didn't work. Did I not put it in right? Yeah, there we go. It does work. See, it says, hello, Dagny Taggart. So that works, right? So now we know that we can check to make sure that this is a real person, right? I'm going to get rid of this so that we don't keep seeing that. Um, it's just going to sleep for a second. Sleep just means just wait for one second, uh, you know, for whatever reason. I'm going to change that probably later on. You know, maybe we'll get rid of it. Um, but our next step, now that we know that the user can access our, our little system, um, the first thing I want to do is uh, give them the ability to query for a school. So I'm going to create a function to do this. Um, so this is a little bit different than what we did before. 
So I'm going to create a function called query school. This is generally best practice, right? And the first thing I want to do is clear the screen so that you know I don't see a bunch of junk on the screen. I'm going to ask the user to put in their uh, college name to get information about the college. Um, I'm going to get some standard in, right, just like we talked about before. This is the exact same code that we did before, um, where I'm going to ask them to put in something they know about this college. And then I'm simply going to uh, um, let them know that I'm searching for their college. We're going to create a, um, a SQL script that attempts to query from the school table. Right, so it's going to say, all right, let me go get a list of schools for you. And then we're going to get the result. So we've executed our query, right? So we got the parameter from the user, just like we did before. We're going to execute that query for the user. Now that we have the results of that query, we are going to check to see if uh, there's any results, right? Did we actually get some results here? Oops, and if we did, once again, I'm going to clear the screen. And I'm clearing the screen just to keep things out of the way, right? So it's not just, you know, extending all the way down the screen. And I'm going to show them a list of schools found. And again, this is pretty much exactly what we did before, right? I, um, I showed you this in that previous screen. If you still have that code laying around, it'll work. Uh, and I'm going to, in my while loop, um, I'm going to list just a little bit, a little bit extra in here, right? Um, so I'm going to show some more information. By the way, at the end of each one of these runs, I'm going to set um, standard in two to OPE ID, and the reason I'm going to do that is we're going to scroll down here a little bit. Is I'm going to ask that user after we get this list of schools, I'm going to ask that user to input the um, the OPID for that school. Now, if that, now notice what I'm doing here, if the number of rows is not equal to one, right? So if it's, uh, if there's more than one row, it's going to ask them to pick, you know, to type in the OPE ID. But if there's only one row, it's kind of redundant to ask somebody to type in the ID number again, right? So remember, Drexel only gives us one row. So we don't want to have to then go and type the number in again. So I'm just making it easier for the user here so that if you type in Drexel, it's just going to skip right to the next step. Um, but if not, you have to provide the correct OPE ID. So first, we're getting a list of schools. Then you provide the OPE ID. Before we did this all in two steps, right? Um, but now, you know, I'm putting this all in one little script. Um, so here's the next thing is I showed you a couple different ways that we could get this data from the database, right? I showed you a couple different, um, different ways that we could present that data. So I am going to... Um, ask the user to tell me how they want this data. Um, so I'm going to give them three options. I'm going to give them the option to uh, use JSON, PHP, or just have it return text. And that's it, right? So that's that's how I'm going to uh, let them select, you know, what how they want that data to uh, to be returned. All right, so once they do that, then I'm going to basically just have the user go and, uh, you know, after they tell me how they want the data, I have to create a function um, that's going to go and get that data and do something with it. So now I have to create that function, right? So now I have to create a function for school data. So for my school data function, Right, this is the one that's going to actually go and get the data for that particular school. Um, in order for this to work, I have to pass in an OPE ID, and I'm also allowing the uh, the user to put it to give me the format, whether it's JSON, PHP, or text. Right, so it's going to be one of those three formats. Um, the first part's easy, right? So the first part is we have to get the school info, and again, this is coming from, uh, and I think I called it school data. Let's go back and look. Yeah, so it's going to be school data.
And uh, if I wanted to, I can output that query just for debugging purposes in case something doesn't work after we're done here. Um, and again, this is just like we, we did before. Uh, I'm going to get the results. I'm going to execute the query as we saw in the PowerPoint, right? We execute the query. We're going to get... Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to show the user how many records came back, right? In case there's more than one, uh, we're going to loop through these records. So if um, we have more than zero records, meaning that we actually have a result, right? We don't want to do anything if we don't get a result. Then we're just going to do a while loop to loop through these. And I did this before, right? It seems, you know, every time we do something new on the screen, I'm just doing a clear. You can think of this as almost like pages in a PHP web page. Um, I want to output which record we're looking at, right? So which record am I on? We'll increment this later in the script. Uh, now, remember, there's a couple different formats, right? So if the, um, so what I did here is school data is my data set that I'm getting back, right? So if the format is JSON, I'm going to output it as JSON, right? Otherwise, if they asked for PHP, then I'm going to give you the records as PHP. And then finally, if you didn't ask for either one of those, we're going to have to do something else, right? This is going to be text. Oops, I forgot. We need a uh, little wicket on there. Yeah, so otherwise, we want to do text. So how are we going to do text? Um, oh, and I have to close my while loop here. I always have to get these uh, closing brackets done. So in order to do that, one thing I could do, let's go back to our database engine. Um, what's kind of neat about the database This query, show columns from school data, should give me a list of all the columns in school data, right? So this is just a list of all the columns. So if I want to work with the data and dynamically read these columns, I can do that. Um, and again, this works in just about any programming language. Uh, it's a nice, easy way to work with our data. Um, so let me run that query. So, and again, this is gonna be static. I don't have to get any user input here, um, but basically I'm just gonna get a list of of all of my fields, right? So it's gonna return a list of my fields. I'm gonna execute that query and I'm gonna loop through. So for each one of these fields that I find, right? So for each one of these fields that I have, all I have to do is echo my, uh, my list of fields, right? So all I'm going to do is for each one of the fields, I'm just going to get a list of all the different things that I you know, might know about a school. And again, this is going to be dynamic. However I create that view, this is always going to work. And that's the beauty of this is that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you guys create your own code in SQL, um, but this application is going to work no matter what you do in SQL, right? As long as you've got valid SQL code, um, this little application is still going to work and you're going to see that you're going to be able to make changes in SQL and have it work uh, from the front end, which is kind of nice. Um, so one last thing that we have to do in this little in this little function um, is I have to increment the record count, right? So each time we go through this while loop, right, before we exit this uh, this while loop, we have to increment record count. Right, we set record count up here to one. So each time we go, th each time we output a record, we're going to increment that. Um, I'm going to ask the user, do they really want to go on to the next record, or they want to exit? You know, I've seen enough. Let me just get out. But if they say yes, it, it'll just uh, it'll just loop through. But if they say no, right? So if the answer is no to viewing the next record, then I'm going to do a break, which basically is just going to return them back um, out of the program, right? Um, I'm also going to add an else in here. So right down here. And we have to close our function, right? So here's my opening bracket, my close bracket. So why did I add an else? Um, if the um, 
If the result set is not greater than zero, it's going to output that there's no records for whatever OPID they put in, right? Um, so that's basically it. So that's going to be my two functions. I have my school data function and I've got my query school function, right? And the query school function is going to call the school data function, right? So it's going to go out and do a call to that. All right. So that is, uh, so basically now my user, let's go back over here. I don't need the uh, parameter on here anymore. So my pass phrase is going to be P2. Hello, Dagny. It exits. Um, why did it do that? Let's go back to my code. Oh, right, because uh, now that I'm logged in, right, the next step is I need to call this query, right? So I have to query. So now it's going to call the query school um, function. So let's go back over here. We're logged in. Oh, there we go. So it cleared the screen. I'm going to type, uh, we've been working with Rowan, so I'll do Rowan. And we're going to look up 260900. Um, we're going to get text, I guess. We get a uh, fatal error uh, on line 95. So let me take a look at line 95 and see what went wrong. Oh, there's my problem. Uh, I wrote school info, but we had changed this to school data. So that's my view name, right? Otherwise it won't work. So let's go back again. It's uh, just put a random password in, search for Rowan. We'll get back text and it worked, right? We got back a record. Um, let's see what happens if we get multiple records. So we're gonna log in again. And we'll try brown, 4051325. This one has two records, right? All right. So, of course, it didn't loop through those two records. So one last change I want to make to this. Um, you know, each time we go in and run these queries, right? So let's try another one here. So every time I run a query, we'll see, I'll do brown again. I'm going to do JSON this time, right? Um, it takes me right back to the command prompt, but that means I have to log in again if I want to try to do something else. So just to kind of make this easier to work with, uh, to play with, I am going to number one uh, under query school. So what happens is when you first run the script, it's going to ask you to log in and then it runs query school. And when you're done, it returns you right back to query school, right? So once this is done, it loops right back to here. So I'm going to create a while loop. So while true, that means forever, right? Because true will always be true. It's true is never false. Uh, I'm just going to tell it to run query school, right? I'm going to come back over here. Now, if I, once I log in, I go to Brown. And I come right back to this and I can do my next college. Now, something went wrong here, so let me f make sure I didn't get that wrong. Ah, you know what? I see the problem. So, um, it's going it, to, you know, once it finishes running that query, it's going to go right back in and, and run this again. We kind of have to stop it first, right? So, one thing we could do is just ask the user if they want to run another query, right? Um, we're going to have to ask them for some input here, right? So, we already know how to do that. That's pretty straightforward, right? So we're going to ask them for some input. And then we're just going to check to see what they said. So if they, uh, if they say Y for yes, then it's going to run query school. Um, otherwise, if they don't say Y, then we're just going to clear the screen 
and do a break, which is going to basically stop our program, right? Because there's nothing left to do. It's just going to, it's just going to stop. Um, so let's give that a try. Okay, we're logged in. Going to search for Brown. Just going to do text. And it says nothing was found. I'm going to run another query. I'm going to say yes. Try Brown again. I might have just mistyped it, right? 11, 1, 2, 3, 4. That worked. So now I get my result. And I'm going to run another query. Yes. Now remember, if I type Drexel, um, there's only one result, so it takes me right to this and outputs without asking me to plug it in again. Um, so for the assignment, I am going to give you the function for query school, and I'm going to give you the function for school data. So the only thing you're going to have to do in your, uh, in your PHP script is create your connection to SQL, uh, create your connection, Check to make sure that you can connect to it, right? You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's generally best practice, right? So you know if it doesn't work and you at least get an error message uh, in the command line. And then down here, um, you're going to have to put the code in for the login uh, and this little loop right here. So you can copy this right from my video, uh, but you'll have to do this code. But as I said, I'm going to give you query school. So let me leave, leave this on the screen for you right here. Um, so this would be a good time to pause to make sure you have this code correct from here to here. And then also make sure you have your connection info and you could have reused that from the previous lab from uh, PA4. So once you have all that, you copy and paste these two functions uh, and everything else should work for you. Uh, so then uh, what you're basically going to do is uh, you're going to go back over to um, over to here. And if I hit no to run another query, it's going to take me out. So I'm going to run it again. Put my passphrase in. I'm logged in. Uh, type brown. I get my list. I would like you to take a screenshot of this. And then uh, you're also going to include... And it doesn't have to be Brown, right? Whatever school you want. Pick a different school other than Drexel, Brown, or Rowan. So use any other school in the database. Uh, anything you want. Just, you know, use some other query. And then uh, when you get to this other screen, I want you to output the, um, uh, the text version of this. So I'll put the text version of this and uh, also turn that in. And again, it's for whichever one of those schools that you decided to do a query for, something other than Brown and other than Rowan and other than Drexel, right? It could be Temple, it could be, you know, Princeton. I don't, I don't really care. It could be anything you like. Uh, and then we have one more step that we want to try. So just really quick, I want to make just a quick change in here. Um, let's set the sleep time to four. That way we can see how we logged in, right? So I'm going to come back in here. And uh, actually, let me control C here. Let's go back in. So I'm going to put in my, my passphrase P5, right? And I'm collected as uh, Eddie Willers, right? So the first record in my database for API users, let's take a look real quick, right? So the first one I have is Dagny Taggart, whose password is P2. And then there's Henry Reardon and so forth and so on. So let's say I wanted to bypass the authentication, right? So I'm a user. I want to get around the authentication. Let me control C here. Um, think about what gets passed in here, right? So, so let me let me show a little bit of logging here, right? So let's just do P3. It shows me Henry Reardon. We come back, and just to kind of understand what's going on here. Oh, we already are echoing get login. It's right there. Um, me control C. I thought we didn't have that. So let me just show you what the query looks like. Okay, so there's our, our query right there. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back to SQL. So that's our query, and we know that this is what's getting substituted. So we're typing in P5, and it's getting shoved in between those two single quotes. 
So how could I trick the system into letting me log in? Well, instead of typing P5, what if I typed, well, we'll do foo. If I type foo, followed by a single quote. So let me put a space in here so we can see where this starts, right? So what if I typed in foo, followed by a single quote, and then added an or bar equals bar. Now I have to have a closing quotation mark to end the SQL statement, but remember, this is what is going to get substituted for my variable, right? My variables in this position. Let me just make this a little bit more explicit here. So this is where dollar API user is going to go, right? It's going to be in this position right here. So if instead of typing AP, you know, instead of typing my password, which might be P1, what if I typed this code instead? So I'm going to copy this to get it on my clipboard, right? So it's foo or bar. Now, if I run this, right? So if I run this just like this, and let me just take out the spaces here so that we don't break it, right? Think about whether or not this is going to work. What's this going to return? Well, it's going to return all the records, right? And if you look at my code, all I'm doing is checking to see if the number of rows is greater than zero. If it is, we assume it's a valid user, right? Um, so this is definitely susceptible to uh, some attack. So let's see if we can attack my little system here. So there's my string. Hit enter. And there it is, right? I, I, that's obviously not Dagny Taggart's password, but it still logged me in. So that's how a SQL injection attack works. Now, luckily... The, the uh, library that we're using with PHP is pretty smart, and it can figure out, um, basically it knows that you're passing in this variable, that this is, you know, this is a variable that's been passed into the string, and it can do some extra stuff, which, you know, I don't want to get into too much detail here, but it, it's doing some stuff to know when people are trying to inject commands. Now, it let me get away with what I just did um, there is, however, you know, in some SQL, you know, in some libraries, instead of just doing query, they might do multi underscore query, which allows PHP to do multiple queries at the same time, which means that they could be separated with semicolons. So what I want you to do is come up with another example of a SQL injection attack. It could be at any point in this code, right? Anywhere that somebody might be able to get away with a SQL injection attack, if we're using login, you know, we have our own, either because we're using our own login or we're letting users type in whatever they want, right? So I want you to come up with some kind of SQL injection attack example. Um, so what I want you to turn in for this last portion is a SQL injection example, um, how we might fix that in either the database or in our code. So what could we add to try to prevent that type of SQL injection from happening? Um, and again, it can be on any of these fields, right? It could be on any of the things that we're typing in in this little application. Uh, there's lots of vulnerabilities in this application. So I just want you to start to think about some of the vulnerabilities databases could have uh, with uh, something as simple as SQL injection. Um, now, like I said, a lot of these attacks are not going to work because my SQL I, it's okay if you give me an example of something that should plausibly work, but may not necessarily work because my SQL I is too smart, right? So that's okay. You don't have to do something that actually is going to work. Just give me something that plausibly could work that you could slip in there that might work. And certainly if you come up with one that does work, that's great. That's uh, kind of neat if you can come up with something that actually works. So that's going to be the last deliverable for, um, for this assignment. So again, an example of a SQL injection attack for this little application and also uh, give me an explanation of what you could do to mitigate the possibility of that attack working other than the fact that my SQL I might be blocking it outright. You know, what else could we do in our code to check that? A lot of folks talk about in IT security that IT security is is layers of security, right? So just because my SQL I can prevent that attack, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't shoot, do other things to prevent it in our code as well. Right. So that's it. So that is the assignment for practical assignment eight.